Welcome, welcome. What's up, everybody? Come on in. We are live. We're live. Can you believe it? It's been a minute since we've been live. You know, uh, we used to go live every day, sometimes twice a day in the real height of lockdown. We were live all the time. It was an amazing gift, really, to like connect with everybody live. And I have to say, I do miss that daily live connection. So good to be here with you. What's up, Tortog? That's a regular on the live. Tortog O says, Keys or Manus should be cool. Greetings to all. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. I've got uh, Jeffrey Keys are waiting in the green room as a nice uh, bonus, but you're going to have to stick around for that. What's up, Ulrike? Oh, there's a ton of double dippers in here. Joe, Ulrike, they all were at the Daily Guide to Practice session today at one. What's up, Anne from Germany, regular on our YouTube lives. What's going on? What's up, Rich from Vegas, also a regular. Uh, Ken Union Beats has listened to Bill Evans live in Paris. That is an underrated Bill Evans album for sure. There's a double dipper, Noriko. What's up, Greg? What's up, Holger double dipping? Jan double dipping? Some of these people may be even triple dipping because Bob had a class. Bob Debu had a class right after mine. So what's up, George? We're just giving it a couple minutes here as people find us. We already have a nice big group in here. We're talking about a brand new course today, and we're so excited for us. I see a lot of Open Studio members on here. You all already have access to this course on your Open Studio dashboard. And I've already got some feedback from Joe, who's been checking it out all morning. And Joe's been really digging it. Um, and we're going to talk with Jeffrey Kieser himself about some of the concepts in this new course called Jazz Piano Essentials. And that title has some meaning behind it. That's Prelude. That's actually Jack. What's up, Jack? Chayla's double dipping. What's up, Chayla? We were working on some left-hand voicing options uh, over the standard Green Dolphin Street in the key of E flat today. And uh, actually, some of what we talked about, I have queued up here in Jeffrey's new course about using voicings that have one, two, three, four, five, and six notes. Just, just starting simple and building on top of that. We can talk a little bit more about that today with the man himself. What's up, Jaywalk? What's up, Brendan from Chicago? What's up, Juan from Oslo? What's up, Karen? All right, y'all. Well, we're going to get into it here. We're about there. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. I'm so thrilled to be with you live here on a Friday. It's a holiday weekend here in the US, so always exciting. Someone, I heard someone say the hero of the three day weekend isn't the Monday off. It's the short, it's not the, it's not the three day weekend itself. It's the short work week afterwards. It's the four day work week after that's, that's the real star of the show. And I kind of agree. That's where you get the, the good stuff going. What's up, Mark from the Netherlands, Narda from SoCal. What's up, Yadon from Tel Aviv. Peter from Switzerland, Marwiz from Poland. What's going on? Luca from Rio. Cheers, everybody. So we are at five after. And uh, I'm so excited to share with you today. We're going to do a little bit of a tour of a brand new course we have here at Open Studio. And this course is something we've been really excited to release for quite a while. We recorded it a few months ago, not that long ago trying to remember the exact time Jeffrey will probably remember because he was on tour passing through St. Louis. And, you know, as happens, we had a free afternoon and he came through and recorded what has now become uh, our new course, Jazz Piano Essentials. And the entire idea behind the course is that, you know, during the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown, a lot of teachers went online even more so than before. I mean, Skype lessons have been a thing for a long, long time, but you know, when that was all you could do for a while, uh, a lot of great players and teachers like Jeffrey Keezer started teaching a lot more over things like Zoom and Skype. And uh, Jeffrey put together this list of topics that were really ideas that came to him from his students, actually from some open studio feedback that he got doing our master classes and releasing courses from us and from some live uh, students. That's my understanding of, of how he got the ideas. And I love this because I've had this similar experience teaching here at Open Studio where some of our best 
courses and, and, and videos that we make to help people have come from uh, problems that you all share with us, right? Like I'm having this issue with voicings or I'm having this issue with this or how do you do this or how do you get this touch or whatever it is. And it's, and it's you know, some things that we don't as teachers sometime even, sometimes even realize might be an issue, you know? And so it's been really, really helpful for us to have these connections like these live events so that we can talk to you about like, what are you working on and what are you struggling with? And then hopefully we can try to help you uh, dig your way out of that. And that's what this entire course is about. So like, that's why I'm so stoked about this because a lot of these were problems that I've had in the past and I've uh, tried to work myself out of too. And to hear Jeffrey Kieser explain it and the way that his great musical mind kind of organizes these thoughts. I don't know, for me, it makes so much sense. Like his other courses here with Open Studio, has three other courses uh, with us and, and they're all have this thread of a, a really nice, uh, clear way to organize our thoughts around this, because, you know, there's a million ways to think about everything, right? There's, there's not one right way to do anything when it comes to music, because it's all subjective. And even the way we learn it, uh, some people learn differently. Some people are in different places in the path, but, uh, the way I, the, what, what I like, what I really like about the way Jeffrey teaches things is kind of the way he structures the thoughts so that it makes a, a clear line in my head, at least. And we found that with so many of our members and so many of his fans that have come, uh, to hang with us and learn. So what's up? I just want to give a special shout out to all of our open studio members here already. This course is already on your dashboard again. So please go check that out. If you, uh, want to get this course, this is a members only course. So we are offering uh, for this weekend only, you have to become an open studio member, a piano access pass member, which means that you get, not only do you get Jeffrey Keezer's course, uh, this new course, uh, Jazz Piano Essentials with all these amazing most requested topics, but you get every piano course we've ever made, all the courses that Peter Martin has ever made, including the Jazz Piano Method, <clears throat> excuse me, all the courses, uh, the course that Fred Hirsch has made. And then if you stay on, Fred is about to release his second course with us, all about accompanying. You get those, you get uh, Elio Alves' uh, course, Brazilian Jazz Piano, all of Jeffrey Keezer's other courses, all of my little mini courses that I make about very specific problems that we can work on. You get all of that. And so this weekend, I think uh, Sam has put together a deal for 25% off both monthly and annual. So you can get that um, piano access pass for 30 bucks a month, which is a very cheap price for that. And I think for the annual, it's 270, which actually means if you're going to be long term, you save another 25%. Uh, which is a pretty good deal, honestly. And that's what most people do here. And we have a lot of Open Studio Pro members here, which is even next level. And and of course, Open Studio Pro, you get everything. So uh, uh, including master classes with people like Jeffrey Kieser as well. Uh, so anyway, you can follow the link here in the description uh, if you want to uh, check out the Piano Access Pass. You could try it for a month and see if it's for you. Honestly, I tell people all that all the time. Get it for a month. It's 30 bucks. It's not you know, it's not anything that's uh, going to be that cost prohibitive, especially for the amount of things that you get. I think it's the best deal in online music education, if I do say so myself. OK, I'm talking a lot here, but I want to start sharing the music because to me, that's what this is really all about here. So I am before I bring Jeffrey on to talk about some of these concepts, I just want to kind of show you the course itself. Bam, there it is. This is our typical course page. And uh, I'm just going to kind of go through the titles here so you can see the subjects that are covered. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full lessons here for this. And like I said, all of these subjects are Jeffrey's most requested topics of the last couple of years. We start with comping because I think it's such a brilliant way to think about comping that Jeffrey gets into. Uh, and we'll get into the, 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 the material here in a little bit when we bring on Jeffrey himself. After that is, I think, one of the most brilliant lessons on phrasing I've ever uh, seen. It's called ballad phrasing. It's really something you can use on any tune that has lyrics um, or any tune that has a melody. You could use the concepts covered in ballad phrasing. Jeffrey uses ballads because I think there's a lot, a lot more time here, but it's really all about the lyrics. And it's incredible to watch him improvise with lyrics uh, as he's going here. And by the way, you might have already noticed just in the first two lessons, bam, they both have notation, our living notation right there. Uh, at all of these lessons have notation. They all have PDF uh, notation that you can uh, print out and take with you on your own, as does 
pretty much everything we do at this point. So it's one of our, our proudest uh, features that we have. And shout out to Max Gamiz, who is our incredible uh, in-house transcriber for all this stuff. Ma Max is the kind of uh, brilliant musical mind that can transcribe an entire Jeffrey Keezer course and then turn around and do an entire Fred Hirsch course all in the same month. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Uh, knowing where you're going and how to get there is an incredible lesson about seeing what's about to happen with these major landmarks and tunes and maybe planning out your route as you get there via changes, via melody, uh, as you're improvising. Different approaches to, to the blues. Okay, so this is important. This is about to drop on YouTube. So for those of you who aren't Open Studio members, at 4 p.m. Eastern in about 48 minutes, you can see this lesson uh, on YouTube itself. Uh, we're going to release this for free as a, as a bit of a sample. Uh, and it's going to be called, on YouTube, it's going to be called, what is, what is Restrictive Practice and Why Does It Work So Well? Because that's what really, that's really what Jeffrey's doing here is what we call restrictive practice, where you say, I'm just going to do one thing for one course. In other words, I'm, we're going to play enough blues. I'm just going to play bebop. And then I'm going to play pentatonics or pure melody or whatever. But you're giving yourself very specific parameters so that you can kind of focus on that. And then you start uh, blurring that line. Really cool lesson. And you could check that out here. We're going to have a, a, a launch party for that, essentially leading up to that on this live here. Uh, after that is touch and articulation, uh, talking a lot about McCoy Tyner and specific touches and ways to get articulation at the piano. <clears throat> for me, this is a master class in some really advanced stuff. Piano is one of those instruments that uh, everything is in our hands. We're playing the series of buttons and hammers and, and mechanical things. And it, in a lot of ways, it could be the hardest to have, uh, the hardest instrument to get your own distinct sound. And Jeffrey breaks down brilliantly how you might think about that and work on that. Trading with the transcription is about trading with the transcription. What do you do once you've transcribed with some something? This is something that not only Jeffrey has gotten a lot of requests for, we get requests for this all the time. I transcribe this, now what? And he's got a brilliant take on how to use your transcription and really lock it in and, and make it become part of your playing. Uh, and then the Block Chords Masterclass, uh, this is picking up where his course uh, Keys to a Jazz Piano left off uh, with some brilliant takes on block chords from a bunch of different pianists. I definitely want to talk to Jeffrey about that today. And then finally, thinking like a horn player. This might be my favorite lesson uh, where Jeffrey talks about using melody in a way that is not paint by numbers or a Sudoku puzzle that somehow I think a lot of jazz pianists get into this habit of doing. And this for me personally, when I watched him record this, broke open some things, light bulb moments happening for me, which is often the case when I watch these masters teach this stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to everybody's uh, uh, take on that and what they think. So that's it. That's the the eight lesson. It all comes with notation, of course. And like I said before, this is uh, our first time launching a course as members only. So we are doing a deal for membership. You can save 25%, meaning that you can get the monthly piano access pass, Jeffrey's new course, Jazz Piano Essentials, and all the courses we've ever made for 30 bucks a month. And that'll be locked in forever for you. So you might take advantage of that because it's a pretty great deal. Uh, and then you get literally 24 five plus courses, jazz piano courses. And then as long as you're a member, you get whatever we release. So coming down the pipeline, we have, like I said, Fred Hirsch. I'm recording a bit of a six diminished workout, all like dealing with Hank Jones and Barry Harris stuff. Uh, all of that that's coming out in the next few months, a rhythm course for pianists coming out in the next few months, all of that's coming out is yours as long as you're a member. It's, it's a pretty good deal, honestly, especially at that price. So you can check that out with the link in the description. Okay. That's quite a bit of blathering, and uh, we have a, a special guest here in the green room, and I'm so proud uh, to have him here today, and I just want to thank him for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the great Jeffrey Keezer. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey. Hey. Whoa. How's it going, man? I heard a weird uh, echo. How's Got a the, bit of an echo. How's the level? Am I, am I good? It sounds really good. Okay. How about if I play? That's your sounds lesson today. B, B flat triad. There's a recording of Keith Jarrett trio playing Someday My Prince Will Come. I don't know the name of the record, but he, he ends it on. <laughs> After all that moment. stuff, all that harmony and all that stuff, and he just ends the ends it on a triad. 
But if you play the triad in the way that you know that Keith can play a triad, you know it's going to be perfect. Yeah. Well, it. it makes you think, was that really a triad? Like, it makes you start questioning, like, did I just hear what I thought? It's like the Samuel Barber piano concerto. I, mean, I don't know if you ever heard this as a recording. He wrote it for a pianist named John Browning in the late 60s. And Samuel Barber, and there's all this, like, out stuff. And then he has these big C major triads in the middle of it, you know? And you hear him, like, and you go, is that just a... You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It makes, makes you question, you know, you're you know, very, uh, uh, you know, rips in this time space continuum, you know? But don't you think <laughs> that, that in itself, like when you set up all of this dissonance and all these like extensions and you have all these overtones swirling around, right, sometimes right, right. the most effective thing you can do is to play a triad or, or a fifth. I love like ending things sometimes without a third, just to be like, listen, we're getting rid of all the stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, it just kind of like keeps you guessing. Like, mm, yeah, what is that? every overtone must go. You know, it's <laughs> get a <them> fire. That's <laughs> like those, those sales you see in in Queens. You know, the, the Brooklyn. You know, the the short shops. Everything must go. You know, right? <laughs> harmony. Exactly. All harmony, harmony must go. Clearance sale. Right. <laughs> well, I I'm I'm glad I didn't put you to sleep in my uh, in my build up here, but I am super stoked about this course, man. It's it's so thoughtful as usual, and it's so good, and uh, I'm excited to share it with everybody. And I, I'm excited to talk to you about some of these concepts a little bit live here. And and you know, of course, we'll take questions as we're going from anybody here in the chat. If you uh, want to ask any question uh, about what we're talking about or the course or anything, uh, please put it in there, and we'll see if we can get to it. But um, let's talk a little bit, Jeffrey, first about like this idea about the course uh, material. And I remember when you came into the studio, you said, you know, these are all things that students have been bringing to me, or a lot of them are, are yeah. things that students yeah. have been bringing to me for the last couple of years. So how did these things stick with you? Yeah, well, we were thinking of calling this course, I, I think, kind of half joking that Keys gets requests or I get requests or something like, like that Oscar mm -hmm. Peterson record. You know, yeah, homage to we get requests. We, we get requests, which incidentally, I I asked Ray Brown about that that album, and I said, you know that album called We Get Requests. Everyone loves that record. I said, did Oscar really? Did he really play requests? Ray said, hell no. <laughs> it's called We Get Requests. It's not We Honor Requests or actually. That's play. how they made that record. So if anybody asks yeah, for yeah, a core yeah. podcast, they can be like, we made a record. Check we that made out. a record. It's on the record. We're not going to play it live. Yeah. That's awesome. Um. No, yeah, the idea was I, I did put a feeler out, I think, a couple of years ago on Open Studio and on Facebook and, you know, various things like say, hey, what kind of, you know, what kind of stuff would, would you like to, to study with me? What kinds of questions can I answer? And I got a lot of great responses and I stored it all on a, you know, on a, on a note. And and then over the last couple of years, you know, we we're doing so much teaching i, I teach uh at, at juilliard and william patterson universities here in new york new jersey and a lot of things come up in the course of teaching students too and, and so a, a lot of the methodology and and little you know methods of practicing things are things that we just as teachers we kind of invent sometimes on the spot because you guys ask a question how do you do this thing and you go, well, I never really thought about exactly how do I do it. But then you start to, you know, you can quickly kind of break it down and go, well, it's really just this, 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 and this. And these steps can get you to this place. And then I kept thinking, man, I wish I had somebody tell me this when I was 15 or 16 or 17, learning this vocabulary of this music. It would have, I really would have gotten a lot further along, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And and, and also the, the, I think it was Richard Fenniman, the great scientist a uh, popularizer of science who said of science who said if you want to learn anything really well teach it totally which is so true you know because in totally. the process i i feel like with my students i i'm learning as much in in discovering how to explain a concept to someone you know or at least my way of how to, i mean you know we all do similar things somewhat and and we'll probably think about it in a different way and yeah. which which is cool and and that's why I, I always encourage my students whether online or in person to say you know this is great I'm, i love that you study with me I'm, I'm glad that i can help or try to help you in some way but also go get lessons from you know I, that's why this the the piano access pass is so great because you got true. You know, i might say one thing one way you might say the same thing a different way or peter or fred you know because we're all dealing with the same 
language, the same vocabulary, you know? Absolutely. Peter and I talk, yeah. have had this discussion about like something as trivial as like the altered scale, right? Mm -hmm. And we think about it in completely different ways, how we kind of, how, how it's positioned. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but how it's sort of positioned in my musical mind is yeah. different than how it's positioned in Peter's musical mind. And every time we talk about it, we get like camps of like, no, I, I I agree with Peter. No, I think it's like, I think of it like how Adam thinks of it. And it's so, but that just proves that like, we all think about these similar things and it gets used in the exact same way, really at the end, in the end, it's just a collection of sounds, you know, Yeah. but yeah. How, how it's sort of embedded in each one of us can be very, very different. And we all learn at different speeds and different ways, you know, and I think it's, I, I agree with you about the the piano access pass is like, hearing Fred Hirsch talk about something and then hearing you talk about it in some ways you're getting it looked at from, I mean, you're getting lots of experts giving you different points of view of, of a lot of, of the similar, similar things, you know, a lot of the same issues. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, so I just, I mean, these, these are really the mostly response to responses to direct requests from open studio members or things that have come up you know, in, in the course of lessons that I thought, Hey, this might be nice to share with other people, you know? So there they are. <laughs> so I'm going to go through a couple of my favorite topics. And I wonder if you could maybe just, uh, kind of elaborate on some of them. I think one of my most favorite things that I got to watch you do was in the, the ballad phrasing lesson. Right. And something that you were calling back phrasing, which I've never really heard that term, but I've heard back phrasing before, obviously, you know, but I, I didn't really associate it with that, that term of back phrasing and yeah. uh, it like pretty common. So, you know, again, whew, totally missed the boat on that one. But uh, you had some stories of some singers back phrasing that you had accompanied. I think maybe Betty Carter, there was a Betty Carter story about. Yeah, her back yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a singer term. So it just means essentially, you know, you're delivering the lyrics and the melody later than they would actually happen in the in the sheet music or something. So they're not not right on the beat, but after the beat and sometimes very much after the beat, like extremely so. And, and Betty was the absolute master of that. And I, didn't, I never actually played with Betty, but uh, I heard her a lot, heard her live a lot with different pianists, Mark Carey and and Stephen Scott and and um, uh, who else played with her? Uh, uh, Cyrus Chestnut, I think, was playing with her. But but um, she would do, you know. So the the idea is like, you know, this is this is a uh, like on body and soul. So pretty much straightforward on the beat would be like. Which has a great verse, by the way. This tune has a beautiful verse. Right? Then it goes yeah. major. treat it like a singer would and this requires as, as a pianist this requires you to split your brain a little bit so you know maybe left hand although it's not always when i talk about splitting your brain it's not always like the one side of your brain does your left hand and the other side does the right because sometimes you need to use parts of your left hand to play right hand parts and parts of your right hand to play left hand parts but the idea is that you have two parts and so you know if the beat let's say you know i always say use a metronome so you know what you're doing right so because you don't want your ballads to be just rubato all the time you know you want you, bet, you know there's a there's a time to play rubato and there's a time to not play rubato and you need to be clear on which is which um because sometimes i hear pianists go back and forth between like well are you in tempo or are you out of tempo like you know decide yeah. commit to one or the other right so that's why i say use a metronome let's go a little slower for a ballad Here's this is pretty nice, nice and slow. I'm at 60, like one, 
60 beats per minute. Classic. You know, and, and the idea is your, your left hand stays on the beat and your right hand is the vocalist who is behind the beat. So something like this. Some of the phrases can be on the beat, some can be after. So you kind of play with it the way a vocalist would be like. Uh... So that's right on the beat, kind of. And then. And the, thing, the nice thing is, too, is you can find notes that work harmonically. Like, if, you know, the second phrase. Still hanging on that E flat, but it's part of that E diminished. Yeah. Right? So, and then you just hang on to it a little bit longer. But one, I was watching Betty Carter sing this one night, and and she was like, and I talked to Mark Carey about this, and and she said, man, if you you, you couldn't go with her, you had to just stay right where you were as a rhythm section and let her give her all that space to just mess with you right yeah and, she, and if you went with her if you waited and tried to catch up because mm -mm, that was that would ruin the effect right so it was something like this like a five oh, almost hip, four bars that's so hip though but listen it still works harmonically yeah that, I mean, it makes so much sense why that. Right? You know, it's something like that. You know, but I think part of our jobs as artists is to set up an audience's expectations and then sort of delightfully defy their expectations to surprise and delight, right? But you have to sort of give them something to hold on to before you you can let all that go. To me, this this idea of using the phrase and the way that you described it before, where you can be sort of on it for one phrase and then the next phrase, you know, especially if a, a standard like body and soul, we're all hearing the melody in our head as we're listening to you, you know? Yeah. And so for yeah. you to pull it back so much, it's familiar, it's novel, it's giving me this like really delightful surprise with the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's a very, very, and what's, I, what I love about it too is it's like, that's something we can all do tonight at our gigs. Like it's something that I can try pretty much instantly without any kind of like new technique or anything like that. It's just something we can, yeah. I mean, you have to be able to keep the, the left hand solid. Well, that's the key. And that yeah. can work for yeah, sure. You gotta know where you are in the chords and, and it doesn't have to be that extreme as the, the Betty Carter, you know, example, but, but these are things you can do to kind of play with the phrasing. And the opposite is true too, what they call front phrasing or forward phrasing, which is something like more like folk singers will do sting sometimes sings that way. You know, it's like, that's more of like a, like a spoken, yeah. almost like a Broadway or vaudeville kind of thing. You know what I mean? Cool. Which you can also do. Right. But it's, it's like being aware of all those, options and possibilities and you know and and the other part of that lesson i think or or related to that would be um being playing the actual lyrics of the song right Whichever well that's what i want to get about. next like yeah that that's sort of the, the 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 meat of the lesson here and i'll share it so that we can we can check it out i have it queued up here so this is body and soul again and you just sort of demonstrated uh by playing the melody straight forward and then this is a technique that we've worked on actually in the daily guided practice session when we've worked on uh, phrasing, uh, because I think it can be so handy um, to get you out of a rut of, you know, that thing of where you're just, you're just sort of mindlessly running your fingers and it's playing the same old thing. We get asked that all the time. Like, I'm just playing everything I already know how to do. And, 
And like using the lyrics as your jumping off point, first of all, it's brilliant because that's the song. I mean, that's like, that's some good information to know about. Like it can, can not only shade rhythmically what you're playing, but sort of the, the shape of the line and the mood of the whole piece that, that can be part of it, or at least your take on it. So uh, I want to just play everybody. So this is Jeffrey, this is your first uh, from the chorus itself. And this is by the way, Bob Debu on bass. Hey, accompanying you for the Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is your, you're using the lyrics here uh, as you're jumping. So you're, you're actually singing with your own melodic content, but using the lyrics as the basis of what you're playing, just right, a, a yeah. different melody, right? Is that pretty much it? That's no, it's yeah, that's exactly it. So let's check it out here. So this is, I think you do a full chorus here. Uh, this is from uh, Jeffrey's new course called jazz piano essentials. You can check out the link there in the description. Exact same syllables, same words. Isn't that great? So that's, uh, and you can see there here on the screen, you can see the lyrics are part of this. We, we, Max <laughs> was painstakingly yeah. trying to line up the lyrics to what we were hearing as the melody. And I think we, we got it pretty close. Max, man. Max. And, and the detail on the rhythms too, because I was doing both. I was, I was playing the lyrics with my own notes and doing a lot of back phrasing too. Totally. So, so some of those melodies, you know what I mean? They weren't right on the beat. They were kind of, you know, phrase yeah. more like a vocalist would, but you know, and and what? like in in these courses, you know, you, you should only take them as suggestions. None of these are saying like this is the right way to play or the only way you should play a ballad. This is just one thing you can do out of a million different things you can do. But it's an idea; it's something to think about. You know, absolutely. And again, you know, the cool thing I think about this course being part of this piano access pass is we were talking about back phrasing. I know that. Peter has done some lessons talking about placing your phrasing, you know, in different parts. And I know that on, in Fred Hirsch's course, he's talked specifically about back phrasing and about doing that a, a very similar thing. But, you know, just little differences in how you guys look at this stuff. And it's mm. so fascinating for the student to see these different perspectives on, again, a very similar idea. One, an idea that you probably all picked up watching other people just do it, listening to other people do it and then and then putting your own spin on it. It's really great. Um, very, very cool, uh, lesson, uh, that's called ballad phrasing from the new jazz piano essentials. And yeah, man, I'm, I'm super stoked about this one because again, I'm, I'm going to try it this weekend on my gigs, <laughs> give it a, I'm going to give it an immediate go and I'll report back. <laughs> yeah, it works out. 
Um, so is there, Jeffrey, is there anything that you on the course want to see or talk about? Have you seen the course yet? <laughs> I'm seeing it for the first time too, but I mean, listen, you know, I, I trust you guys. Like I, I was, they're always cool. And I know that when I go in, they used to ask Art Blakey in the recording studio, they say, Art, do you want to hear that back? He said, I heard it when I played it. <laughs> you know what I mean? so, no, I mean, it's well, cool, but whatever you want to look at, sure. It's, well, yeah. the other one that I wanted to talk to you about, because I, I think with a lot of our members knowing where what they're working on, um, the comping lesson, uh, I think is such a great way to think about accompaniment because you literally start off with one note. Mm -hmm. um, so starting off with comping, I think you're doing a, um, a B flat blues and you start with just one using one note and then doing two notes and then three notes and then four notes. And now you have two hands involved. You know, uh, I wonder if you could talk about just the idea behind that, like, like comping with pra why are you practicing comping or why should someone practicing practice comping with these different, um, amounts of notes, different notes? Well, it's just, again, it's just to have more variety. I, I these are questions that I get asked over and over again is, you know, about comping. How do you comp? what's the philosophy of comping, you know, what, because it's kind of a mystery, right? We're, we're always talking about soloing and chords and scales and voicings and all this stuff, but comping students kind of get thrown to the wolves a lot, you know, like, okay, now go comp for 12 yeah. courses. And, and, you know, if you are in a situation where you're accompanying your, your, at your jam session and there's 30 saxophone players lined up and you have to comp on, what is this thing called love for 45 minutes straight? You may evolve some ways of comping over that time for, for survival <laughs> to keep yourself interested and engaged and just, you know, to do something different. Um, but really it, it's just this idea that it doesn't always have to be the same, you know, on a B flat blues, it doesn't have to be. fine there's nothing wrong with that but it's not always going to be appropriate to the uh the soloist that you're comping for right and also yeah. not you know th there's different things about the, the number of notes you use but also how much you know how rhythmically active are you versus not act you know jim hall didn't like a lot of activity george coleman did jo jo does george coleman loves you know he loves just strong you know, the way Harold Mayburn comped, it was like having a big band behind you, you know, always like these rhythms and these shouts and this and that cool stuff. Jim Hall yeah. was the opposite. He liked a lot of space. Inger Jensen likes a lot of space, you know, yeah. uh, Diane Reeves, you know, don't get too busy, you know, like just keep it lay down a nice carpet. And, and, you know, the way that like my two favorite compers are uh, Hank Jones and Herbie Hancock. And they're very different from each other. Very different, yeah. You know, Hank was one of the busiest pianists in his lifetime, was always on call for everything. And he was on so many sessions and gigs because he was such a great accompanist. He was also a great soloist, but but he was really just that beautiful. He would just lay down a beautiful carpet and environment, you know, just, just a nice pad for people to play that never really got in the way. And Herbie and Chick Corea, too, they're more like conversational accompanists yep. right so yeah, someone yeah. will play a phrase they'll play something that might be the opposite of it you know or something like a diet more like a dialogue and so you don't get a lot of those just shell voicings and that kind of stuff with them and so this is just an offshoot of that idea like well what are some things you can do to mix it up a little bit and one obvious place for me just came from well the size of the voicings you use and the smallest voicing you could use is just one note, you know, on a B flat seven, that's the seven, the A flat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's all you need, you know, maybe that, and you hear Duke Ellington doing that sometimes, you know, Monk, other pianists, monk, just, yeah. you know, just very sparse and you can kind of build it up from there. And, and also to say that A flat, that one note could be in your left hand or your right hand, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you know, a left hand only thing. But and so so we were just looking at, I think, different different sizes of voicings. Also, I don't know, I don't even know if I talked about this in the lesson, but 
the register on the piano, the range you play it in yeah, is you also did. interesting, right? You can so, do it. Oh, you have Bob solo and you do yeah. some range and it makes a big difference. There's it's a, it's a big difference. It, there's no right or wrong to it, but it's yeah. just a different thing. Yeah. A different thing. And so you, you know, you look at this whole piano. I remember when I was a little kid and the piano was like a football field from the bottom <laughs> to the top. And I used to, and you would, you were so little, you could literally walk, yeah. you know, yeah. as you're from one end of the piano to the other. And, and I remember when I was finally old enough to reach and this feels so small. And I was like, that all it is, you know, you thought it was, you had to have the wingspan of like a, you know, a, a, like a, a bald eagle or a yeah. condor or something to reach one. But the idea is like this whole thing is here for you. And whether you're soloing or, you know, playing solo piano or comping, you know, you can use the whole piano. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, and one of the yeah. <clears throat> one of the things too, just about um, you were talking about how much you play as well, like basically how how thick you make the comping, how busy you make it. But I one of my favorite lines from the whole course is from this comping lesson where you say, uh, "I've never been asked to play more <laughs> as a as an accompanist." That's you know, true. Yeah, you, you only get asked to play less, so just keep that in mind. Like less is probably always more, even even if you're on the busier side. You know, it, it, you can you can usually get away with not playing as much as opposed to. I've more. yeah, but I've only I've, ever been been asked to play less. Yeah, and I've had is, people respond to being busy, like respond good, like mm -hmm. like in a, in a positive way, like oh, I like this, you know. But no one ever asks for it. Well, <laughs> that's one of the cool things about, a, you, you know, in in this music and comping that you can you actually have the ability to remove things. It's not like when you're cooking, you put too much salt in, you can't take it out, you know what That's I mean? <laughs> but you can, you can always take out some of the spices or, you know, take out some notes. Well, I want to uh, go through this because you do this really cool demonstration of a, a handful of choruses here where you start with one note and then you end up with a bunch of notes. And so I thought we could just listen to that. Uh, or, or watch this section uh, real quick. This is from the comping lesson from Jeffrey's new course, Jazz Piano Essentials. These are his most requested topics over the last couple of years, and they are all of them bangers. And uh, this is very, very cool. So he's he's going to go through Bob DeBoo's playing bass here. He's going to go through a chorus of comping a B flat blues, adding notes as he goes. So we'll start with one and the next chorus two and so on. So here it is from Jazz Piano. <laughs> Also leaving lots of space. You don't have to play every chord. Let the bass play some of the chords, right? Two notes in the left hand. You can do some voice leading. You know, they don't have to be all the thirds and the sevenths all the time. Right? Three notes. You can do wide intervals like fours like that or close together. notes. Now you probably need, you can do it with one hand. <laughs> Your cluster. Now let's do those four notes divided by two hands. in each hand, but you can do it like this. You can do it like this. Okay, now I'm getting into five note voice things. Here you go.
six notes, three in each hand. Now we're getting into that more wide voicing territory. So there we go. That's the end of that chorus there. We ended up, uh, some of this, Jeffrey, there's just question marks because you start playing a ton, a ton of notes in each hand. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're just kind of playing with the idea of, of more and more and more. It's such a fun exercise, though, to do. That, that, by the way, that would make a great play along. You guys are swinging there with the, with the B-flat blues. Yeah. Hey, Bob, man. Bob's got such a great beat, man. He does have a great beat. So, and Bob's on uh, all of these lessons. Bruce had a, a relevant question here, which is, uh, do you recommend following your lessons in order? So I'll answer for Jeffrey Bruce because Jeffrey doesn't even know the order. Yeah, of course, because there was no real uh, order that you came in with from what I remember in the sessions. It was just kind of right, had yeah. these separate ideas, which is kind of like your first course with us, uh, Keys to Jazz Piano. This is like a collection of individual ideas uh, not meant to be taken in any specific route, yeah. but really stuff that you can come back to again and again and again yeah. as you get more comfortable with it. Yeah, just, you know, like like the I Ching, just open up a page and see what happens. <laughs> totally. totally. <laughs> well, uh, Jeffrey, thank you so much for this course. It's a real gift uh, for all of us who are who are loving to uh, nerd out on the way you think about this stuff. And uh, I, I'm enjoying uh, taking it as much as everybody else. If you're an open studio member, it's already on your dashboard. If you want to become a member, now's the time because you can save 25% uh, by clicking that link below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thanks for being here yeah. too to talk about it. Great to see you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for joining from all over the world. It's cool to see folks all over in Europe and Brazil and man, Israel. How cool. All totally. right. Yeah. We have the, the, the greatest group. Jeffrey Keyser, everybody, give it up. Thank you, Jeffrey. So great to see you, man. Uh, and just a reminder one more time that this is our very first member-only course. Uh, so uh, if you want to see uh, Jazz, Piano Jeff, uh, Jazz Piano Essentials with Jeffrey Keyser, uh, you need to become an Open Studio member. We've got a ton of members here, and it's really an incredible deal because for uh, the price you get uh, here, it's 30 bucks a month. You get over 25 piano courses from people like Jeffrey Keezer, Fred Hirsch, Peter Martin, Elio Alves, and myself. Here's just a couple of uh, the over 25 courses that are part of that Piano Access Pass membership. Again, you can try a month for 30 bucks and you got nothing to lose. It's really great. Uh, Elements of Solo Piano, which is Jeffrey's last course. All of these are yours with the, the Piano Access Pass, plus anything we make and release as long as you're a member. Uh, so if you get that annual pass for 270, which is ridiculously affordable uh, for that much, you get anything we make for the next year as well, which we, you know, as any member will tell you, we're always making stuff. So thank you everybody for being here today and uh, checking out the new course. Again, if you're a member, go check your dashboard because it's there now. We also have uh, a lesson from the course about to release on YouTube so that you can spend some time with it uh, and get to know it uh, for free, which we love to do because we love to connect with you any way we can. And uh, I encourage you to check out that is premiering in 11, 10 minutes uh, on this very YouTube channel. So I'm going to get out of here and stick around for the premiere. There's also a link in the description for the premiere of that video. It's all about restrictive practice and different approaches to playing a blues. I can't recommend it enough. It's why we put it on YouTube because it's so incredible. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. A uh, special shout out to all of our Open Studio Pro members in here evangelizing. We love you guys. And uh, so good to see you. Double dippers, triple dippers. That means that they've been to several classes today and this week. Uh, we're, we're working every day over here. The honor is our stretch. Thank you, Chayla. Thank you, Nan. Thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. Stay tuned for the premiere of the new video coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern. And until next time. Happy practicing. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great holiday. Cheers, folks.